Hi, thank you so much and um, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Sri Ganapati. Uh, I'm with Microsoft and um, part of their um, AI team uh, called the Global Black Belt. And uh, our team focuses on uh, working with many enterprise customers like yourself. Um, and um, we specifically focus on our AI capabilities. So excited to join you today um, and talk about some of the cool work that Microsoft is doing in this area. Um, and uh, considering the audience here uh, probably cares about a lot of the uh, scenarios that are interesting for financial services industry, uh, I'm gonna spend a little bit of time about what are some patterns we are seeing? What are some use cases that we are seeing um, that some of my customers are taking advantage of today uh, around AI um, in their business? So I'm gonna jump right in. Um, so the way we think about uh, the industry, the FSI industry, the financial services industry uh, is across three spectrums. Uh, you know, if you're banking, you know, there are certain set of scenarios that we focus on. If you're capital markets, there are certain other scenarios that come to uh, life. And then um, insurance is another key one for us. But even though, you know, and, and you may belong to one of them or maybe something outside, uh, a lot of these themes are very common when you think about it from a technology perspective. Um, so I'm going to share a few uh, pointers in terms of like uh, how our customers, and you can see some logos here on the slide, and I'll share so, some more as I go through this presentation. But we have many big uh, customers in the uh, financial services industry that are taking advantage of our uh, Azure uh, cloud platform in general, and specifically using some of our AI capabilities. So when we talk about um, how do you transform uh, into an intelligent uh, banking uh, here are some of the themes that we're seeing um, that relates to that. So we have customers that are talking about how do we do this through empowering their own internal employees um, around you know, things like teamwork and uh, workplace modernization. And some of these themes, as you can see, is not just about using a technology like AI. While AI or machine learning is a critical piece of enabling a lot of these scenarios like intelligent banking, it's part of a bigger uh, focus area for our customers and even for Microsoft. So there are other related technologies that really uh, will play a role when you're architecting this end-to-end. -end. But what I will do is I'll call out some of the uh, machine learning slash AI focused areas that customers are taking advantage of in each of these. Um, something uh, that's equally important is also, um, I'm pretty sure if you're banks, you're dealing with a lot of um, um, managing risk and um, facilitating compliance um, internally and making sure that you know um, you're, you're, you you have a good understanding of the insights of risk, and so for whenever you're doing any sort of insights and analytics, using techniques like machine learning and others could provide you with uh, more of a probabilistic scenario of you know items that you may not have encountered for in a typical rules-based approach, and that's what we are seeing with UBS, one of our customers that are taking advantage of the Azure stack to really deepen the risk insights uh, to facilitate compliance. The one that I actually worked relatively recently is around combating financial crime. And there are several different sub-focus areas that get combined into this. Uh, things like, you know, how do you do fraud detection? Uh, you know, if you're doing payments and, you know, you have credit card line of business and you want to do detecting of frauds, um, that's an important scenario. Anti-money laundering is, of course, you know, uh, something that I'm sure all uh, banking customers are you know, very familiar with. And uh, so one of the cool things that we can do with our AI services, and I'll get into what our AI services consist of and how do you take advantage of them here shortly. But one of the significant things that we're seeing, especially around financial crime, is by using machine learning algorithms to reduce uh, what we call false positives that are typically uh, very common uh, when you're doing um, you know, fraud detection type um, use cases. So typically when you're trying to detect fraud patterns, Many of the customers that we talk to have a rules-based approach. That's a traditional way of doing things where you check for a number of different considerations or criteria that can detect a particular fraudulent transaction as an example. The problem with the rules-based approach is the modern-day fraudsters and the modern-day techniques to actually um, do fraud is evolving. And so it's very hard to keep up with the rules-based approach. And what banks typically end up what ends up happening when you have a system that's just rules based is you get a lot of false positives. So even though, so let's say I, you know, swipe my credit card here in Dallas this morning, and then in this evening I uh, swipe my same credit card in uh, a different location. 
Um, there are some techniques and rules that will detect my uh, location and will maybe alert the system. But just that itself is not enough. Maybe I did travel, right? I did take a flight and move to another location, and so it's a valid transaction. By triggering that as a fraud by just a simple rule like that, what ends up happening is uh, a false positive. And this actually is a big problem because you lose the trust of the customers by alerting them on um, you know, scenarios where it is not a real fraud. And also, you end up managing these systems and um, really not, um, you know, really overburdening the systems with um, rules that you know may not be really applicable. So even reducing these false positive rates by a certain percentage point typically is huge, and that's where machine learning and those techniques come in. So now you're just not talking about some rules, but you're talking about a lot of other factors, whether it's biometric detection um, and and a few other uh, you know rules that you can, a uh, few other machine learning models that you can play with to really create a, a fraud detection system that's intelligent. And that's what one of our partners, BioCatch, has, uh, helps uh, you know, banks do is being able to get the full profile of a customer and not just looking at a few factors and using Azure AI and machine learning to do that. Uh, a few others here uh, around modernizing payments and core banking and delivering differentiated customer experiences. You can see some examples like Metro Bank and ClearBank that are all saving on significant infrastructure costs as well. It's not just about using um, uh, the machine learning services from Azure, but it's also about how do you increase your agility and save on infrastructure costs? Because a lot of these modeling exercises typically require spinning up uh, expensive uh, GPU and CPU type you know, uh, machines, and uh, you don't wanna be doing that on premises. You, you wanna quickly test something, test a theory, test a model, experiment with it, pay for what you use and spin it down. And so the power of um, you know, using a cloud computing platform to run these AI models become very, very critical. I'm gonna move into the next section, um, you know, which is capital markets. And if you see the themes here, it's very similar, even though this is very much uh, catered towards capital markets. Uh, the themes are very similar to what you saw on the previous slide around what a banking customer would wanna do, whether it's managing risk across the enterprise, offering differentiated client experiences, um, and, and so on and so forth. The one that's sort of interesting here, which is the last one, is um, how do you also use machine learning and AI to enable a green financial services industry? A lot of our customers are trying to create ESG solutions and uh, are working on sustainability priorities. Microsoft, you may have seen some recent announcements about going completely carbon neutral, and um, you know, we have a lot of uh, you know, those green initiatives as well. Now, you may ask, how does AI play a role in this? AI plays a significant role. Uh, you know, one of the key uh, themes for our AI set of services is how do you build responsible machine learning systems? So we have a whole initiative around doing things like how do you detect bias in your models? How do you make sure that your models are fair? <clears throat> and so there are a lot of societal impacts in you know, being able to use AI in a responsible manner. And um, having a carbon neutral footprint and being able to analyze various factors that go into planning maybe your real estate uh, based on that is you know, one of the use cases that we're also seeing that is starting to take shape. All right, I'll, I'll move on to the last uh, sort of sub uh, vertical under financial services, uh, the way we think about it, which is insurance. And as you can see, uh, you know, the teams are very similar, whether it's improving risk modeling, uh, modernizing your systems or empowering the employees. A lot of these are um, you know, common themes. It's just you know, each industry has a flavor of it that may be very uh, focused or custom for them. Um, and, and the delivering the differentiated policyholder experiences is one that I actually recently worked on where they're using AI to really understand where are you know, policyholders, um, you know, what is the best place for you to have uh, a, an accelerated growth and loyalty strategy for your customer relationships. And you may have heard terms like customer 360 thrown in the mix. It's really about understanding the full profile of the customer, right? It's not just about saying, you know, this customer, um, you know, has a set of parameters that you're tracking in, their intern in your internal data systems. It's about all those additional external factors. Maybe the customer got a recent promotion and now you're going to track their LinkedIn profiles also as one of the data points and your machine learning algorithms are intelligently tracking these different variables to really understand your customer better so that you can offer experiences that are catered to every single customer. And you cannot do that with a traditional system. You cannot create a software application that's gonna have a different role for each customer. Uh, by using um, AI and machine learning techniques, you can easily uh, create that at scale, but yet 
be very focused on the individual customer needs. That's really where the power of AI comes into play. So with that context that I've set as a background, I want to talk about now, how do you start building these AI applications? Or maybe you're already building a lot of these AI applications. How do you start um, using uh, some of these AI uh, services that Microsoft offers into your existing systems? So there are a number of ways to do it. And this slide talks about um, what are our different capabilities under the Azure AI umbrella. I'm going to start with the bottom, a bottom-most uh, block here in the slide, which is our Azure Machine Learning Service. This is the core service that Microsoft has in terms of helping your data science teams and your uh, data engineers and other personas that are interested in building AI applications in doing that in a managed, controlled, and end-to-end -end manner. Whether it's building your models and experimenting with them, whether it's deploying those models, tracking them, whether it's managing their end-to-end -end life cycle in a repeatable fashion, Azure Machine Learning is a service that's built for that. And it's not just built for uh, just you know, creating models from scratch and using the Azure service uh, as the default for everything, but it's meant to be an open and interoperable service, meaning that if you have existing uh, models that you're already building or even using another cloud provider, as an example, you can still use Azure Machine Learning to manage parts of the life cycle. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a little more detail here in a second. Now, the middle block called Cognitive Services is a very popular offering from Microsoft where a lot of our customers have said, I don't want to build models from scratch for every single use case. Does Microsoft provide pre-built models? And more importantly, can I take those models and customize them so that I don't have to start from scratch? And that's exactly what Cognitive Services does. Cognitive Services is a set of pre-built, customizable AI models that Microsoft offers. And these models are all built due to the fact that we have several products in, in our organization that take advantage of them, whether it's our Office products, whether it's our Bing, whether it's uh, Kinect. All these different services actually use a lot of deep learning and machine learning algorithms. And what our research departments and our engineering departments do is that uh, they recognize a lot of these scenarios are repeatable that could be taken advantage of by customers. And so we're offering these models as APIs that you can consume in your application. And that's what we mean by cognitive services. And uh, there are four different categories at a high level, uh, as you can see on the slide. A set of services that are categorized as vision-based, speech-based, language-based, and decision-based. And each of these different services may uh, obviously serve different scenarios and use cases. So talking about the financial services uh, industry and um, you know, going back to some of the industry themes that I talked about, I'll give you an example. So if you are an insurance customer and you're trying to understand your customer insights and you're trying to build the customer 360 profile like I was talking about, maybe a lot of what you need to initially do is understand existing uh, data sets that you have, whether it's even things like call center and analyzing call center information, so call center analytics. But to start there, you may have to first take maybe some calls that were uh, recorded and then you have to transcribe them into text. So a service like speech to text, which is part of our cognitive services, would be utilized in that scenario. Now, typically, to take a call center audio and transcribe it and um, convert it into a different language requires a lot of AI techniques. And that's where some of these pre-built models, these deep learning models that Microsoft have built come into play. There are various other examples. You know, the example of vision-based services. We have customers that are trying to use uh, face detection and different ways of authenticating their clients. And we have models that can help you do that. And then uh, language models is a whole uh, set of uh, services around natural language processing, which is obviously a very important uh, area of focus in the finance service industry, especially around document intelligence. You may have a number of different financial services documents that you want to process, understand, analyze, and mine for knowledge. And a set of language models that we have is very useful. The set of services you see on the top block of the side, which is called scenario-specific services, go one step further. While we have these models that you can take advantage of, like cognitive services, we've also built on top of them certain services that are focused on solving a particular business problem. For example, form recognizer. I just talked about how if you want to build a document intelligence system, you may have to take existing documents and then and analyze them. One of the common types of documents is forms. It could be invoice forms, it could be tax forms, it could be W-2s, 
you name it. A lot of uh, process automation that happens in financial services industry and others, in fact, um, deal with being able to extract information from these forms and then uh, take those key value pairs and then do something in a downstream system. Maybe you know I'm an insurance customer. I get my uh, request from from my customers online to, to file for new insurance claims. I may want to automate that whole claims processing. I may want to take that information from these claims, read the key pieces of information, and then uh, maybe send them a, a a particular code. To do that today, it's a manual process. Typically, you go and you feed that information to a database system. You run some software algorithms, and then you sort of uh, figure out what that code is. It would be great if we can automate all of that. We can read those forms automatically, and you can just uh, you know, scan for key pieces of information like the customer name, the birth date, and things like that that, are, that you're interested in in the form, and then feed them into a uh, downstream system. So it's, it's robotic process automation, but with intelligence built into it. So we call it intelligent automation. So Forms Recognizer is a tool that automatically does that for you. You typically feed it a set of forms of a certain type, and then it creates a model behind the scenes, and then any new forms that it sees, it can automatically detect. And there are various ways of doing this. You can just feed a form without providing it with any intelligence in an unsupervised manner, and then the form recognizer service will automatically, based on you know certain vision models that it uses behind the scenes, understand the layout of the form. Maybe it looks for check marks, it looks for tables, it looks for a few different things, and it reports out the information it found. But an even better technique would be to, uh, to provide forms recognizer with a labeled approach where you can label the forms and say, here is the key piece of information that I'm interested in. So this is supervised learning and you're teaching the machine what to look for. And then once you do that, the form recognizer uh, creates a custom model that's just uh, custom built for your, uh, for your scenario and for your data set. So there are lots of applications of form recognizer that we've seen customers take advantage of. On similar lines like Form Recognizer, the Cognitive Search Service that is also mentioned on the top block is a service that we, uh, we have customers using, which is more around, I have all of these unstructured documents in my enterprise. I have you know, PDFs, I have Word documents, I have Excel, I have PowerPoints. I want to mine for useful information that is hidden in these documents, right? So maybe I have a lot of these um, you know, uh, 10Ks and I wanna understand key pieces of a company to then build an investor portfolio based on that. So in an investment scenario, I may have to analyze tons and tons of documents to really provide my uh, investor with a custom um, you know, scenario where they have intelligence about some of the key pieces of information that's coming in. So just processing all these documents, analyst reports, et cetera, could be a mind-numbing task. And this is where cognitive search comes in. It's an Azure service that lets you upload tons of unstructured documents of different file types that we support out of the box and additional types that you can quickly add. Once you do that, the service automatically indexes all this information for you. Once the service indexes the um, information, then you can apply AI techniques on top of it. Like I can, I can find locations, I can find key um, entities like organization names, et cetera. It automatically takes all that out for me so that I can search on it more intelligently or I can apply language translation to it by converting from one language to another. So for, for example, some of these documents in a different language, I wanna convert them. That's also uh, something that you can build in. And several other AI techniques like that can be built in. That's just a sampling. Once you do that, now you have enriched content from all of these unstructured documents in your organization, and you can then uh, maybe have a search UI on top of that, or you can take that information and do something with it in a downstream process. So a lot of use cases for a cognitive search, which is part of our Azure AI umbrella. So let me um, you know, spend a few minutes also talking about how these different applications that, we, uh, that I just showed you also cater to different personas. So when you're building these AI applications, you may be wondering, what kind of skills should I have or do I need to have? And the good news is that we have services that are catered to different personas. And on this slide, you see how we have four different quadrants based on whether somebody is a code first or a no code, low code developer, whether somebody is a machine learning expert or not a machine learning expert. And whichever quadrant you sit in, you have options from the Microsoft stack. So on the top right, let's start from the top right. The top right is a persona who is a machine learning expert and usually wants to build these applications in a code first manner. So this is your professional data scientist in your organization. 
Azure Machine Learning, like I mentioned in the previous slide, is a service that they want to take advantage of. Azure Machine Learning provides a notebook experience. It also supports all the popular open source IDEs and you can, um, you know, and other IDEs, and you can bring them in and start building your model as a data scientist. Maybe you are a machine learning expert, but you want to build these models in a low code, no code fashion. That's your top left, your um, you know, persona that's more of a drag and drop modeler. These are usually people that are familiar with products like SaaS and IBM SPSS and others that want to build machine learning models in a UI manner. We have a service uh, uh, within Azure Machine Learning or an experience within Azure Machine Learning called the designer where you can build these models in a drag and drop approach. Then let's go to the bottom left. These are your business analysts typically. They are not coders and they're not machine learning experts either, but they are domain experts. So they are critical in, in the process of building AI applications. So how do we help this audience? There are lots of different offerings available to help that persona. The one uh, that you know, uh, is utilized quite a bit is our Power BI service, which is actually a visualization and dashboarding service that business analysts use. But what we have done with Power BI is we have also enhanced it by providing it with AI capabilities. It's called AI Insights. So now you can call pre-built AI models that Microsoft has built, the cognitive services like I mentioned in the previous slide, within your Power BI interface. So a business analyst, the, without leaving the tool of his or her choice, can actually now uh, also use AI models to enrich their data set. And there are other tools like Power Apps, which is a no-code, low-code platform, and it's got a ton of built-in AI capabilities for solving a lot of common use cases. And then we also have a service called AutoML, which is part of our Azure machine learning platform that can help somebody build models automatically by just providing data set to the tool. And the tool then figures out what's the right algorithm to use, what set of parameter combination it needs to try out and builds a set of models on your behalf. So this is great for uh, entry-level data scientists, but it's also a great tool for professional data scientists, even though it's in the bottom left quadrant, even professional data scientists can take advantage of this because it helps prevent all that grunt work of trying out different algorithms and different parameter combinations that they spend a lot of time doing, and they can get a quick start into their model building experience. And then from there on, they can apply that expertise and extend that model further. And the last uh, audience here on the slide is the bottom right, which is the developer. So he or she is a coder, but not a machine learning expert. So they're not a data scientist, but they still want to build AI applications. And this is the critical uh, audience. This is where we find most of the skill set in uh, any company. While most companies have some data scientists, there is not enough data scientists. There are lots of developers, however. How do we make sure that this audience also can build AI applications? And that's where some of the services I already mentioned, like Azure Cognitive Services, come into play. So we have already built the models. You as a developer simply use it in, in your application by calling it as an API. So once you call the API, you get some results that back from that model, and then you can build your application now in a much more intelligent way with AI infused into it. So, so those are sort of like uh, another way of looking at the different um, AI applications that we have. And, uh, and so that hopefully gives you an idea of the different personas that can be uh, involved in this uh, AI process. So I won't go into too much details of the Azure Machine Learning Service. I think I already mentioned a lot of these key tenets that we have uh, in terms of like what, what do we stand for when we're building these products, but, but whether it's for all skill levels, like I just mentioned, it's not just about running these models in a compute platform, right? That's easy to do. Uh, any cloud vendor can do it. But the differentiation comes when you want to have that end-to-end -end life cycle management. It's not about running and building a model one time. It's about how do you automate it? How do you put a workflow so that when new data comes in, that model can be retrained with new data? That end-to-end uh, end -end life cycle management is called MLOps, and that's a critical piece of what uh, Microsoft offers as well. And then uh, two other things, responsible ML, I already touched upon it. Uh, we wanna make sure that you can build models and AI in a responsible manner. And then last but not the least, how do you do this uh, also in an open and interoperable manner? Meaning that uh, we want you to um, you know, take advantage of existing open source frameworks like TensorFlow, PyTorch, and others that you may already be using, but use Azure Machine Learning as a way to orchestrate it. And then interoperate it with existing systems, right? Whether it's um, your on-premises systems, I'm hearing some echo, uh, but whether it's on-premises systems that you have, and then you know, bring those models into Azure just where, where you need them. Um, so, so with that, uh, so that's, that's kind of like the four main, uh, you know, goals for us. 
Um, I, the rest of the slides, you know, I leave it as a uh, reference. We have number of partners. So Microsoft, you know, provides the platform. Uh, we have a number of partners that also build solutions on top of our platform. Uh, and, uh, and you may have heard from some of them, uh, you know, already, uh, or you may be hearing from others in the future, but uh, we have uh, partners that are working on how do you combat financial crime? I talked about it, but we have pre-built solutions that are offered by partners like BioCatch, Cognizant, and others. Um, I talked about the green financial services industry as one of the key goals for us. And we have partners that have built solutions on top of our platform for doing that. And then I did talk about risk modeling a little bit. And we have Moody's and FIS and others that have built uh, also solutions on top of our Azure platform. As you can see, many, many customers using our service. This is just a simple sampling of uh, some of the key ones that are using the Azure machine learning service effectively uh, to build AI applications. This is the last slide, and I'll, um, oh, you know, if you, if you have any questions, I'll give them time for that. Um, you know, for all the great work that our customers are doing, right? It's really the kudos goes to our customers in uh, really innovating uh, with AI and using the Azure AI ecosystem. We are recognized as a leader in the Forrester wave amongst all the different cloud vendors that you see out there. So, so with that, um, I'm, uh, I, I don't, I, I think I'm out of time, um, but uh, I want to say thank you for your attention and your time.